Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and in this video I want to give you some tips on how to improve the performance of your flight simulator, specifically X-Plane 11, but the things I'm going to tell you will apply to whatever flight simulator you are using. You'll just need to find the settings and those things that I will discuss in the simulator that you have. So to get the most out of your simulator, there's some things that I really think are important to have. And I want to go over a few of those things. And then at the end, I want to give you some tips on setting up X-Plane 11 to get the best frame rate possible. So let's get started. So this is my current system. And as you can see, it's pretty detailed. I have spent quite a few years putting this together. It's always a work in progress. I have four monitors. Uh, I have an extra keyboard here for other things. This here is radio stack that I'm building. And here we have a throttle quadrant. Down here we have my trim wheel. And down here we have rudder pedals. The minimum requirement, in my opinion, is trim wheel, rudder pedals, and a good yoke and throttle combination. And I'll go over those in more detail towards the end of this video. I'll give you some recommendations for getting started, the equipment you can use to get started on a budget. Obviously, I've spent a lot of money over the years on this system, and I really enjoy it. One of the things I really like doing is building things for the simulator. I'm working here on this uh, radio stack and throttle quadrant down here. Uh, and if you remember, years ago, I built this uh, control panel. This was um, for the radios and anything you wanted. Basically, it's a keyboard. So I just took the circuit board out of a keyboard and I just built this so I could click on buttons to make things work instead of having to use the keyboard. And I did a whole video series on that. So if this is something you're interested in, you can watch that whole series. I show you everything you need to know and do to make something like this. And back to my latest project, which is the radio stack here and my throttle quadrant. And this is basically using an Arduino wired in with some switches and buttons here. And that's really working out pretty well. It's got some problems, but these are things you can do to improve your flight simulator. The more you add, the more realistic it is, the more fun it is. So I'm making this video at the end of 2020, a rather difficult year for everybody, I am sure. With that, it's early December and Christmas is coming up, so I want to give you some ideas for Christmas gifts or maybe your Christmas wish list. So let's start with you've just begun. You've got your simulator going, you've got your monitor, you've got your computer, and you've got a decent yoke. And you're okay, but you need to improve things. I want to give you some recommendations. If you can't afford the trim wheel and the rudder pedals, you just have a yoke and maybe a throttle quadrant. Well, there's one thing I would recommend more than anything else, if you don't have these other controls, would be to get the Eclipse CH Products yoke. This has everything you will need. I've always believed that you need rudder pedals, you need a trim wheel, and guess what? This yoke has paddles here that you can program for the rudder. It also has here, hard to see, but it has a trim wheel here and a trim wheel down here. These are critical for really having smooth operation when you're flying. It's really difficult to use the rudder with keystrokes or buttons up here. Yeah, you could program these for for your trim, but the lag time and stuff, it's really not too good. This is the perfect yoke, in my opinion, if that's all you can afford is a yoke. This works really, really well. 
and it's the yoke I have used for many, many years, up until this new honeycomb yoke came out. And I have to say, this thing is amazing. So, to continue on, in the order I think are most important would be, number one, make sure you can get all the features you need in one system, if that's all you can afford. Next, I would go with rudder pedals. These are very important. Satec has a nice set of rudder pedals, and CH Products has one. This is not as realistic as the Cytec, but they work just as well. The next thing after the pedals, I would go with the trim wheel. I have found this really, really convenient. Trimming is one of those things that takes a while and trying to do that with buttons or keystrokes, you're just never gonna get it. The sensitivity on this trim wheel is really good and it makes it a whole lot easier to trim your airplane. All right, another important item to have would be a throttle quadrant. Notice on the CH clips here, we have the throttle and the mixture here, so it's this is all in one. But the honeycomb yoke, which I will talk about in a bit, has nothing other than some switches. You really need another device, which takes us to the Satec yoke and throttle quadrant. Now you can buy the throttle quadrant separately, and you can buy the combination or you can buy them separately from SciTech. This is a decent yoke. I had it, but I didn't particularly care for it, mainly because it didn't have enough buttons and switches on it for me compared to the Eclipse with buttons and switches, all kinds of things that you can do with that. And that's why my original system was the CH Products yoke, and then I went to the CH Eclipse for all these other features. So those are my recommendations. And I want to talk a little bit about this new honeycomb yoke that came out this year. If you can afford it, get it. That's all I can say. The sensitivity on this thing is fantastic. It's going to make your landings a whole lot easier. It's a great yoke, but it doesn't have a lot of buttons and switches on it. So you're going to need to come up with some other ways to do it. I bought this little wireless keyboard to set on top of the yoke so I could do some things that I used to be able to do with the CH Eclipse yoke. And I bought the throttles over here because there's no throttle on the honeycomb. It's a great yoke. If you can afford it, get it. Or start dropping those Christmas hints for your wish list for Christmas. It's well worth it, I'm telling you. All right, next I want to talk about setting up X-Plane in settings to get the most out of your simulator. So let's take a look at X-Plane in the settings. So let's take a look at some settings that will help you get the most out of your simulator. So we're going to go up here in the upper right. We have these three little sliders up here, and we're going to open up the settings. And what we want to do is go to Data Output. And you're going to find the very first one is going to say frame rate. So we're going to put a checkbox right there where it says show in cockpit. And you'll notice that right over here, we can now see the current frame rate. This is where you want to start for setting up your simulator. The higher the number, the better. So get your frame rate set and check that out. After you've got your frame rate, we want to go to the graphics portion. And this is where you're going to make some changes to get the highest frame rate possible. And the visual effects, this slider right here is what is mostly going to affect your frame rate or the video card. And if you hold the mouse over this little thing, it'll tell you right here that this mostly affects the graphic card, which dramatically affects your frame rate. So this would be the place to start if you have low frame rate. And by low, I mean less than 20. 
Anything less than 20 is horrible. You want a minimum, in my opinion, of 30. 30 frames per second. So if you have low frame rate, bring the slider over to the left and just work your way over. So slide it down here and then check it out. Open up the simulator again, reload and start and see what your frame rate is. Keep doing that until you get a respectable frame rate. After that, you can start playing with these other sliders. Number of world objects. This is mostly going to affect the CPU or your processing unit. So, and it tells you that right there. So these you can slide around, just move them to the left, move them down. This will help increase your frame rate if you're still having problems. And I would keep pushing this as far as I can until it starts to dramatically affect your frame rate. Same thing with texture, quality, and I aliasing, and these things, I don't really mess with those. I left them at uh, whatever they were when I uh, first got the program. And the rest of this stuff, you don't have to worry about in settings. What I'm mostly concerned about here is getting the most out of your simulator in frame rate. That'll make a huge difference in a lot of things that you won't even notice. It will affect how the simulator responds and things like that. So try for the highest frame weight possible. If that means sacrificing the number of world objects, then cut that way down. You want a good frame rate. So here's a tip for you. If you've brought your settings all the way down here and all the way down here, and your frame rate is still lacking, before you run out and buy a new computer thinking that's going to solve the problem, Think about a video card. Look for a video card with the most RAM that you can afford. Push it to the limits. The more RAM you have on your video card, the better your frame rate. That's probably the easiest way to increase your frame rate. So what you're going to want to do is move the sliders all the way over to the left. And then run the simulator and look at your frame rate. Then start working your visual effects over to the right and check again. And just keep doing that until you start losing frame rate and that's where you're going to have to settle. Same thing with the world objects. After you get your visual effects at your maximum or your best frame rate, then start playing with world objects. Increase the number of objects until it really takes a hit on your frame rate, and that's where you want to leave it. You might even want to back down a little bit. It's more important to have a really good frame rate than a lot of objects showing. These things will affect how the simulator works, how it responds, how you see things. It can actually be hard on your eyes with really low frame rate. So that's where you want to start. So let's do a little recap here. To get the most out of your simulator, you want it to be as realistic as possible. And that means rudder pedals, a trim wheel, a good throttle, and a good yoke. After that, you might want to add uh, monitors. More monitors, really nice. Not necessary, but very nice. But if this is not for you, you don't really care about all these extra things, then just stick with that CH Eclipse yoke and you're going to have a great time. That's a great yoke and it'll serve you well. And jump into the settings on your flight simulator and try and get the most frame rate you can get. This will make it a whole lot nicer. So that's it for this little video. I hope it helped you in some way determine what you want to get or don't want to get and help you determine how to set up a simulator to get the most out of it, whichever simulator you have. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please click the like button. If you don't like this, don't just click don't like, but leave a comment and let me know how I can improve. So thank you so much for watching and God bless.